Hey guys, how's it going? It's another Libertarian uh, video themed day. And a while back, I did a video about housing, and some Libertarians didn't get the point of the video. Um, they were completely anti government housing, uh, which is fine. It's within our individual choices to have opinion, uh, uh, individual opinions. I didn't word that right, but whatever. Um, the point I was trying to make, just to reiterate for this for this video and for that video before, was if uh, a place is government funded for housing, should we not have a say in how the policy is ran? Now. Where I live is a community living type of building and staff come in, they help you cook, they help you clean. You have to direct the care, uh, which is fine. And it's <clears throat> it says right in their own, <laughs> their own uh, Bill of Rights that we are supposed to have a say in uh, policy. Um, but yet, whenever I speak up and become a little bit of an advocate about my rights as a tenant... And as an individual thinker, uh, and I exercise my right to free speech, I'm told, well, you just don't want to live here, and that's it, and that's why you're so upset, and if you're not happy here, just leave. And no, if I speak out against uh, Justin Trudeau or the leech Kathleen Wynne, I mean, Kathleen Wynne, does that mean I want to move out of Ontario? Does that mean I want to leave Canada? No, it doesn't. I'm exercising my right to free speech. So, before I go any further, I'm going to get my teammate to uh, read this place's uh, Bill of Rights, um, just so you get the point. <clears throat> Courtesy, respect, and freedom from any form of exploitation, including abuse, physical, mental, sexual, financial, or any other seen to be abusive. Privacy and confidentiality. Respecting the human dignity of the individual. As well, maintenance of confidentiality of all records in accordance with the law. Freedom in decision making. Promotion of anonymy for all service recipients through recognition of the right to give or refuse consent to provision of any community services. Recognition of and respect of individual uniquenses, <coughs> un uniqueness and needs and preferences that may be based on ethnic, spiritual, linguistic, familial, cultural factors thereby enabling the opportunity for realization of full potential. Access to relevant information, including laws, policies, rules, Presentation of all material in, all, in a manner to which the client is able to refer easily as well as opportunity for understanding through full and ongoing discussion. Full participation and freedom to speak out. Participation in the deve development of the individual service plan, review of providers, determination of requirements, evaluation and revision. Freedom to raise concerns and or recommend changes in connection with the services provided and in connection with policies and decisions that affect his or her interest to the service provider, government officials, or any other person without fear of interference. Information in an accessible format regarding procedures for, initiate, for initiating complaints about services provided and or service provider. Safety of environment to the greatest extent possible so right there once they said to me well uh the whole uh freedom to speak about service uh or or um anything like i'm paraphrasing but anything to do with the service they tried to tell me well that that's your individual service and i'm sorry that's not the way it's worded, and the way I look at it, if you are um, being uh, a hypocrite or you are having double standards for one of us, you're having double standards for all of us because we are like a family over here. Uh, so we, the open-minded, um, 
not scared tenants of this building. And I don't mean scared like physically or emotionally, but scared in terms of, oh, uh, some people are afraid to speak up because they don't want to rock the boat. Um, so, I'm sorry, I'm exercising my right to free speech. Um, but yet, because I sent a few, um, let's call them, uh, uh, let's just call it what it is, bitchy emails, um, uh, I'm not anybody in management anymore, uh, even though I apologize for my tone in the emails, but again, I never threatened anybody in any emails, I never would, uh, I don't want to bring harm to anybody, of course, but, um, yet, when I speak my mind, uh, I get reprimanded and I'm not allowed to email, like, you know, I'm being talked to like a 10 year old kid that's grounded. <coughs> and, uh, I've seen so many double standards with this place, um, that I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Uh, let, let me give you an example. Uh, one person that, uh, lives here, understandably, is dating a, um, staff. They've been dating a staff for the last seven years. Management of this place knows about it. Okay, and they okayed it. They pretty much made some provisions, which I'm not going to get into detail. Um, but I mean, I'm not against these people dating, not at all. But what I am against is a double standard because a friend tried to date a staff and that said staff gets fired for quote-unquote breaking a boundary. Whereas, I'm sorry, some of these people... They see us more than they see their own family. So, we get we get to know these people, right? So, uh, I, everybody is an individual. If a client wants to date <coughs> a staff or a staff wants to date a client and they're both consenting adult, then who the hell cares? Let them do it. But don't allow... One person to do it for the last seven years, almost eight years, uh, and then not allow another person, and one person gets fired. Double standard, much, you know? Um, the other thing is, at the time that I filed the complaint within proper sources, um... My there was a lot of issues with my roommates uh, being discriminatory over past events that they quite frankly know nothing about. Uh, they were being discriminatory against my sexual orientation, which again individual thought. If you're anti-gay and you're against it, state it to me once or twice, but just don't keep going about it and don't keep. Don't be a dick about it. So, um, but I was telling them like, hey, this one roommate's like threatening me. Another, you know, he's bringing up past events he knows nothing about. His guests have threatened me. And they're like, no, oh, sorry. If you have an issue, call the police. But yet, yeah, whenever I, uh, you know, told off this roommate once I reached a few breaking points once in a while. I get reprimanded for the way I'm speaking to this roommate, um, which, again, double standard. Why aren't you doing anything about this? Now, don't get me wrong. I've moved, but at the time that I filed the, uh, like, I'm still in the building, but I don't live with roommates anymore, thank God. Uh, I've had enough with that, but at the same time, um, you know, at the time that I filed, all this stuff was going on, so what the hell are you doing? And then, um, <clears throat> then I had the landlord, or the manager of said, uh, 
um, building, uh, bring up past events they know nothing about, started questioning me about it, started questioning me about my past. I answered a little bit under distress, emotional distress. But then I found out under the Landlord and Tenant Board Act, they weren't allowed to ask me those type of questions, even though, by the way, they lied and classified themselves as a care home. So, wait a minute here. Double standard. Uh, you you don't know that clients are going to... Like, honestly, did you not know, being that I'm the advocate that I am, that I'm going to look up the rights as a landlord and tenant kind of situation? <coughs> As long as my rent is paid, and as long as I'm not disturbing anybody else's liberties, um, back the hell off. Um, and, and again, there was one other issue with the roommates, which was, I have my medical uh, cannabis license. I use it for spiritual and medical reasons. Medical, most of all. Um, um, but my roommates didn't have their medical license, and and they were smoking. And sometimes they would smoke in the apartment. Now, the catch-22 with that is, it's a smoke-free building. So, I'm supposed to go outside and smoke my cannabis. They're supposed to go outside and smoke their cigarettes and cannabis if they were using it. And, and I'm not against them using cannabis with a, without a medical license. That's their choice. I believe in cannabis. So why am I going to be a hypocrite and say you can't use it if you don't have your license? That wasn't the issue. The issue is, you know that my roommates smoke it as well. You've caught them. They, my landlord pulled this stupid move and searched one roommate's room. And found um, cannabis in his room. They illegally searched his room, which is why I think his eviction notice was dropped very quickly. But yet again, you guys know he was smoking. You guys know all my roommates were smoking. But yet I'm the only one that ever gets questioned over the smell of cannabis. So my issue was. Not that they were smoking, but stop only looking at me for it when you know they're doing it as well. Um, I, I just, again, that points to the favoritism that points. And by the way, one time in a, in a, <clears throat> a tenant management focus group, I was trying to speak up about something and someone that didn't understand part of what was going on um, had the nerve to say to me, well, if you're not happy here, just leave. And the CEO was highly inappropriate and actually thanked this person for their comment. They said, you know, um, let's just call it John, as in John Doe. They said, thank you, John. You know, um, highly inappropriate. It should have been something like, John, we're not here to attack anybody. Um, So-and-so is allowed to state their opinion. Uh, Instead of agreeing with them. Highly unprofessional. Highly inappropriate. (coughs) (coughs) And one time I had a guest uh, speak their mind to the CEO. And I get a written note that my guest was inappropriate to management. And it was a warning. Within, Within an hour of the latest incident. So... It sounded to me, or it sounds like to me, okay, the CEO didn't like his comment, which was a human rights comment, uh, a little bit, because he saw a person with a disability sitting in the rain, because they were pushing the fact that we're not supposed to be smoking by a door, but yet this one person with a disability can't push their wheelchair too far, 
and I made a comment as well as my guest made a comment saying that, you know, can we figure out something where uh, so-and-so doesn't get soaked in the rain? And why did, I think my guest said something like, why did it take you so long to build the smoke area? Um, and when the CEO asked him, well, who are you? He responded, I'm a human rights advocate. So, again, the CEO cannot take criticism, okay? If you're going to work in the public sector and you can't afford to take criticism, get out. How do you think politicians feel? I mean, they create their own mess, but... Um, so again, I speak my mind and I'm a target. Uh, I, I, I speak, you know, when, when this place was, uh, founded, um, we were allowed to be friends with Steph. We were allowed to be like, if Facebook would have been around, we would have been allowed to be on Facebook with Steph, but now we're not. You're taking away our individual choice. To be friends with staff or not. Um, can things sometimes go a little bit ugly? Possibly if someone dates a staff. And then it ends on a sour note. Possibly. But such is life. If you can't deal with that. Weigh out the pros and the cons. Um, before you begin a relationship for example. Um... So, what I don't understand is, I brought all this to the Ontario Human Rights uh, Tribunal. They accepted the case. <coughs> they, they gave me a mediation. But yet, all of a sudden, uh, I got the Ontario Human Rights Legal Support Center saying they're not going to take the case. The only thing I have grounds for is when I requested to um, um, be allowed to record meetings so I can, because I can't take notes. I'm disabled. I can't take notes. The management of this building said, well, we'll take notes for you. I'm sorry. You're taking notes on two, three, on sometimes two or three or four people talking and you expect to take proper notes instead of point form? No, the, uh, that's why I want individual notes or the right to record these meetings. Because their notes, I wish I could show you guys through the screen, is very one-sided. So, I, 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 I just don't understand. Am I a liberal whiner that pushes for human rights issues just because I'm hurt? No. I'm just... I'm, we are losing our right to free speech. This is ridiculous. Um, we, and again, because of a past event that nobody really knows anything about, this makes me feel like I don't have any rights as a Canadian citizen, as a human being. I'm not allowed to speak my mind. Why? Because of a past event? No, not right. Even, um, you know, hypothetically, even uh, uh, prisoners have rights. So, I'm just using that for an example. Everyone, every Canadian, every human has rights, has liberty, has choice. Um, so... I just, I want to do a video explaining why I'm, why I uh, did the older video about housing. Because, again, this is a government funded building with my tax dollars, your tax dollars. And I'm a tenant, I'm a tax paying Canadian citizen, and I should have a right to speak my mind about how the buildings ran. Doesn't mean they got to agree with me. That's not what I'm saying. If you disagree with me, that's your right as a company. As, a, But I mean, 
you cannot look past our rights as Canadian citizens. Point blank. Later.